so um, it's kind of pointless for me to, to, to wait until tomorrow to do my usual video in the morning because um, I have another uh, unfortunate passing of um, in a very important musician for me personally um, and it's um, not going to be big news here in America but it's probably pretty big news in Japan the drummer and singer of Yellow Magic Orchestra, Yukihiro Takahashi, has passed away. He was 70. And a few years ago, he had uh, brain, I think he had brain cancer or some kind of a tumor and had a um, had brain surgery and was in recovery. Uh, I didn't know that he had had a failing health since then. I was hoping he was in recovery. Kind of been thinking a lot about his uh, former musical mate, Ruichi Sakamoto, who we know is in fourth stage um, throat cancer. You know, it's like, geez. Um, again, this is not something I necessarily planned for to talk about as far as pulling stuff to be ready to display, but I need to say um, that for me personally, um, the passing of Yukati Higuro Tash Takahashi is on the same level of impact to me personally as a music lover and fan as the passing of Jeff Beck. And I, need to, and I mean that seriously in that the, uh, the way that um, Yellow Magic Orchestra, um, once they hit me, once it hit me what they were about and how, how it influenced me and how much I loved their music is part of a continuum of greatness that I can immediately identify in my own personal view of <clears throat> how music has hit me and impacted me, you know. Even, you know, I always talk about the Beatles being life-changing, but, but to complete the story, it goes back to my parents and what they were listening to, as I always say with, you know, the things that really hit me hard as a, as a infant, you know, Chuck Berry and Everly Brothers and Little Richard. And so this continuum in my mind of greatness and importance to me personally, musically, uh, Yellow Magic Orchestra, some folks well, may not get it, but they fit, they figure in very strong. I want to get the album, because this first album, okay, hold on, <laughs> here we go because I didn't grab it, but um, I first heard about Yukihiro Takahashi before Yellow Magic Orchestra. Like I said, I didn't get ready for this. If I can just spot it, I'll grab it. The first thing I heard was Sadistic Mika Band, and I have um, their album that they got released on Harvest in, in the U.S. because they were touring with Roxy Music. So that was the first I heard of Takahashi, and I liked the Mika band. I liked the possibility, really, of was what I was hearing in my head because, you know. Now, when I first heard of YMO, because that's the way, that's the short for it. I heard about him because there was a bit of a, there was a bit of a promo splash about them, promotional splash, yellow vinyl, these guys from Japan and the next wave, you know. I uh, didn't catch the joke of the album at first because there is it's a bit of an in-joke where they're doing these this lampooning of Martin Denny and uh, Tiki music electronically on the album. Um, Firecracker, for example, you know. Kind of, I didn't catch it. So when I first heard this, I thought it was a bit corny and didn't like it. And still, actually, um, in context, I get it now. Uh, the technological aspect of what they were doing is like totally thumbs up. But when I heard, and it was through a friend, Joe Budenholzer of Backworld and Disco Ranch. I have to give him credit. He was the one that... And he was the one that actually made me pay more attention to hip hop with his white behind. Um, he had access to this. He was living with a music critic, Roger Catlin. Might have heard of him. 
And Roger was getting, you know, of course, a lot of pre music, and this is something they had gotten when it first came out. BGM, I think this is 1980, 1981. Blew my mind. You know, it's subtle, but it's like it's like nothing I had heard before in the context of electro electronic pop. I was already a big Kraftwerk fan and just a lot of stuff, including disco. So when I heard this, it's like, this caught my attention. It's like, oh, okay, this is another level. This is taking it to another level. And I became an instant huge fan, huge fan. And Takahashi's drumming is very important. It's like he's very precise and he's got great tempo, but he's got feel. It's interesting. It's like these beats are really straight ahead, but I can always tell it's Takahashi because of the feel. I grabbed this. This is an early album, Public Pressure, live album of the early stuff. Hit me like a bomb again, like uh, like Jeff Beck when I heard that. It just like, oh no, that was literally. I said it out loud when I saw the news on my screen, sitting right here as I was doing something, turning, tuning, tuning into getting back online for the day, and the news I saw in my fade feed Jeff Beck died what so the Takahashi was a little different because it was like there's no you at first there was nothing in the US news including Wikipedia I was ahead of it so what I had to do was go ahead and um, Google him using his name in Japanese um, kanji is that the script I, I don't know and sure enough, came up in my news feed in the Japanese news. Yahoo in particular was the first uh, story. And then really less than an hour later, there was a bunch of stories coming in out, out of Japan about the passing of Yukihiro Takahashi. They were superstars in Japan, were, are. The soul of Takahashi in particular called to me, calls to me, called to me as an individual, kind of like out of the Beatles, George Harrison, the type of person he was. I could just vibe with it without even knowing him, but coming through the way he did things and what I would see and hear, he's my kind of person. And um, a person who's trying to live right, you know, trying to, you know, and that definitely comes through, came through to me as I started to get to know the band Yellow Magic Orchestra and the individual members, YMO, I have about 300 pieces in my collection uh, by the members collectively, because I do collect them. Here, I'd love to find this on vinyl. This stuff is hard, you know, expensive and hard to find. Some of it hasn't even come out on vinyl. This one is especially wonderful. Came out in the 90s. Lifetime Happy Time. I wish I could play it for you because it really sounds like the picture. Just a simple life and a person who's contem con 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 contemplating or reflective. You know, he's centered. You know, he's, you know, it's, it's, um, It's a it's a it's a person who's uh, sh sharing that he just de deeply understands what's truly important in life, which is the simple things and to just to live well. And it comes through in the music because it's this blend of electro with with acoustic and even a little bit of country, you know. Oh. Takahashi's massive broadcast from heaven. What a title, you know. I haven't even gotten all the records. He's got this other amazing album called A Day in the Next Life. I mean, you know, so perceptive and deep and loving his words as well as the music. Broadcast from heaven. It's truly, for me, they've, they've always been like... You know, if I'm going to go ahead and be comparative, because we all are, they've always been a cut above. They've always been one of the, it's like, well, this is just too good for most people. I mean, that's honestly what I would be 
to this day, that's the thing that gets to me about music that will really hit me hard, and it's like, and you're looking around and nobody's catching it, and it's like, oh yeah, this is too good, it's too much. You have to work for this music, you know, I guess. When this came out, again, Phil Manzanera of uh, Roxy Music famously played on this album, plus some other great guests. But this was getting some breakthrough. This was like a U.S. release, New Romantic, mm, 1981. Yeah, see, about the same time as I discovered them with BGM. They were making a splash. You know, they had played live, and I was just catching up. But um, New Romantic just played it. That album is classic. It's it's pop music, but it's sophisticated, and it's also very artistic. That's the thing about it. The writing and the playing is just very... They're paying attention to everything. You know, it's not throwaway crap. Here's a single where he's um, collaborating with Steve Jansen of... of um, Japan, and you know how much I love those guys, and I just talked to Richard Barbieri, who was his partner, Stay Close, wonderful, big, it's one of those kind of things where it's like, well, if I had, a, if, if I were a DJ, I'd have been playing the shit out of this music and making it hits, because that's what it takes to make hits, is for people to hear things in repetition, to become familiar with it, Wild and Moody, Another one, cool video for the single of this album, Walking to the Beat. He com collaborated a lot with Bill Nelson as well. You guys like Bill Nelson, I didn't grab. There's a particular album, I think it's called Chimera, by Bill Nelson, where it really just basically sounds like a <laughs> Takahashi album. I'm going on because it's like how much this man's music means to me. School of Thought. School of Thought. This brings me right away back to my summer in Japan in 94. Um, I love Japan. Nihon suki desu totemo, totemo. I loved it. Once a Fool. You know, he, again, he would, he would do this thing like a Johnny Mathis going back to like the crooner thing, you know. But cooler than like Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra was pretty cool, but there were people like Robert Goulet and Johnny Mathis who, and that's who come, comes to mind when he does this side of his music, this side of his pop. And he's covered some cool stuff, some Motown songs he's done good covers of. I'm just going to go on. This isn't all of my Takahashi albums. I, I'd be here forever, but here's what I pulled. Poisson d'Avril. This is a soundtrack, I think, or some kind of TV show. There's um, stills from it. I've seen it online, but since I don't um, speak Japanese, I, I can't tell. It, it comes off like almost like a TV show. But I love the music. Here we go. Murdered by the Music. I think this was the second solo album. I just showed you the single. I'm happy to say that I have the blue vinyl edition of it, which I guess is not rare, but me liking the uh, novelty of colored vinyl, I'm so happy I got this up here. And I like the whole album, I do. Like I said, I got to see Yellow Magic Orchestra at the Hollywood Bowl out in California when they came to America to help with uh, relief regarding, I think, the hurricane, some kind of disaster, the tsunami in Japan. And they played at the Hollywood Bowl with um, Buffalo Daughter, Tawa Te was there, Yoko Ono was a special guest. Um, it was awesome to see them play. And after the show, I was able to get backstage, but I couldn't stay because I I couldn't even stay long enough to meet them. But I was able to get access to backstage, but I had to take a shuttle to get to the bowl and with these other people. So they're they're um, telling me as I'm heading to the backstage, Derek, we got to go. We can't miss the shuttle. And I said, 
man, I'm almost there. I was actually backstage and looking down the hall, looking towards a gaggle of people. I can't say I spotted YMO. I think I spotted Yoko Ono. I was that close to meeting them. Live album, 1983, Yukihiro Takahashi, at Time and Place. I can just go on. I highly recommend this music. Another another um, English uh, edition of the Murdered by the Music album. Love these guys. Okay, so these are sitting out because, again, I was playing them. Oh, man, yeah, see... Now here's the Yellow Magic Orchestra album that I think is like probably their masterpiece, Technodelic. And we've got a couple different versions of it. This is the Japanese version. This is the uh, one from the Netherlands. This is the one that I got originally, my original copy when it came out. 1981. Yeah, this is it. Still got it. Have played the hell out of this. And it has influenced me greatly. You folks that by my music in particular since I, you know, with, starting with Flyover, Murphy, and up to the last album I made, which had, are all primarily electronic. My first records were a combination of acoustic and electronic. You'll hear the influence of YMO, although I've never tried to sound like them, but their influence on how I create Technodelic, and this is a good Example, we hear this album, you'll hear. Yeah, Derek got a whole lot of inspiration from that album. This album even, too. Solid State Survivor, which came before Technodelic. So, after um, their first album, the next thing was uh, X Infinity Multiplies. And this, they have the big hit. Um, uh, um, dun, 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 dun. Well, Riding was a big hit for them. Behind the Mask. Um, Michael Jackson made his own version, changed the words, changed the name of it. Um, a lot of people don't know that. Michael Jackson took a YMO song and made his own version of it. But the music is exactly the same. So this was them breaking through. Still the end of the 70s, or is it 1980? 1980, yeah. And then the next album was this, even better, Solid State Survivor. And i got to give props to Haromi Hosono, this cat here, because... If people don't think that Reiichi Sakamoto was the main guy, it was Hosono. Who's Hosono was the person with the history and the connections and the idea to start this band. Much love for these guys. So I just want you folks to you know catch catch YMO and Yukihiro Takahashi. Very important to me. You all know about Jeff Beck. Everybody knows about Jeff Beck. But just like I just did this interview with Guy Siggers, we just talked since the interview, he really enjoyed it. We're going to do a second part. He was concerned. He thought that we stopped. Oh, maybe we stopped too soon. I said, well, there's more I could ask you, but I, I go by body feel. And it was, to me, I was ready to stop. We're going to do again. We'll do another one. And that's what we were saying. He'd like to talk more. He said, there was so much we didn't touch on. Good people, you know. Musicians is the best, and he's a musician that you all hard, that hardly anyone knows about, or people in the know. That's what I say. People who are into music, those are the kind of folks that know about Universe Zero. You don't casually know about them unless there's some kind of personal connection to someone in the band, and somehow you end up finding out about them. So I feel the same way about YMO that more people in my home, just worldwide, need. Need to know about them. Here's a collectible yellow vinyl 12-inch single of theirs. Firecracker, Technopolis. There's Yukihiro with the hat. He's definitely also um, in the style and fashion. And I guess he has a bit, had a business with the, um, the famous um, fashion designer Yamamoto is the name. And that's one of those CDs that I've been after that I don't think I have. I could never find an actual copy of the one Yaka, Takahashi Yamamoto. I'll have to look. I didn't grab them. This I played all the way through. This is one of my favorites. It's just like a perfect 80s album. What Me Worry. Bill Nelson on here just wailing. Hosono was on here. 
Then he had this guy on here named Zane Grip, who was kind of like a Bowie type, trying to be a new Bowie. I thought it was pretty cool, pretty cool actually. He sings on here, and his voice stands out. Love this music. Oh, tomorrow's just another day. And now without Takahashi. This is a beautiful album. Catch it by the picture. The, the, just the whole thing with him and the dog. You feel me, people? <laughs> oh, one more. This is a uh, collectible 12-inch single with, the, uh, with a large center label. I only have a few of these where it's the um, oversized um, label. Great, great, great musician. My kind of people. I could go on because I have, still have a ton of records and CDs that Takahashi plays on. And then I may talk some more about him soon. Okay. Man, rest in peace. And if you haven't watched the Gee Seggers um, interview, that guy's pretty damn cool. And I'm here's his latest. Again, Allure, Ecle Eclectic Maybe Band. It never occurred to me until he said it, Electric Ladyland. That guy's a kill. Okay. <laughs>